So hopefully you are aware that group theory is all about permutations. By Cayley's theorem, any group that you have can always be thought of as a set of symbols that represent permutations, and then the composition table of that group represents the composition of those permutations. So to understand permutations is to understand group theory. Now when we are talking about a permutation of a finite number of elements, there is an important concept called parity of that permutation, and that's the topic for this video. So let's start with some notations. So we will use as our set that we're going to permute the first four natural numbers, so some symbols that everyone knows. So we'll use one, two, three, and four. So here is an example of a permutation of these four elements, where one goes to two, two goes to one, and three and four are both fixed. This, we can write this as like so in brackets, one goes to two and two goes to one. And we would describe this element because it's only permuting two elements and it's a cycle effectively of two elements, we would call it a two cycle or another very important name for um, permutations where you're just swapping two elements is to call them transpositions. And in fact, transpositions are key to this whole concept of parity. Another example of a permutation of these four elements. So here we've got a slightly more complicated cycle. One is going to go to two, two is going to go to three, and three is going to go to one. And this is a cycle of three elements you can see here. So this is what we would call the three cycle. And the notation for this would be as follows. So again, we have the brackets and then we have one, two, three. And this shows that one is mapped to two, two is mapped to three, and three is mapped to one. So it's a nice rotation of three elements here. And this is where this cycle concept comes from. Um, because in this case, it's kind of rotating two elements. In this case, it's now rotating three elements. This would be another example of a free cycle here. And indeed, this is the free cycle that you get if you compose this cycle with itself. And in this one, one is going to go to three, two is going to go to one, and three is going to go to two. And we would write this as follows, one, three, two. One goes to three, three goes to two, and two goes to one. Final example before we move on, look at this one here. In this one, one is going to three and three is going to one. So one and three are being transposed. And then two is going to four and four is going to two. So two and four are also going to be transposed. So this permutation overall, it's not a four cycle. In fact, it's two two cycles composed together. So the way you would write this is like so. So you'd have the two cycle one and three, composed with the two cycle two and four. And the way that this notation works is that you view this one, the one at the back, as happening first. So you imagine this one happens first and then you do this one. So effectively what this is saying is this overall permutation is made up of uh, this permutation which looks like this. So two goes to four, four goes to two, and one and three are held constant. And then you next do this two cycle which is where one goes to three and three goes to one and two and four are held together. And if you look at what, where overall everything ends up from this line to this line, then it makes this permutation here. So this is not a four cycle, this is a composition of two separate two cycles. So any permutation of these four elements can be described using this notation. Either it's going to be a transposition, it's going to be a free cycle, it's going to be two two cycles composed together, or it's going to be a four cycle. And we didn't actually write down an example of a four cycle, but I'm sure you can come up with one and write it down on your own piece of paper. Just to further this concept that any permutation can be written in this way, let's just go up to the next level. So now we've got a set of five elements. So we've now got one, two, three, four, five, and I've got this quite complicated permutation here. And this is not a five cycle, this is actually a composition of a three cycle and a two cycle. So if you look at this, and I know it looks a bit messy, but one is going to go to three, three goes to four, four goes to one. So that's one three cycle that's independent to the then two cycle that exists here, where two goes to five and five goes to two, and I apologize for how messy this is. So the way that we'd write this in terms of this notation is we'd have our three cycle one, three, four, and then our two cycle two, five. 
And again, remember the notation, the way this works is you view this one as happening first and then this one. Obviously, it doesn't matter. You could have put them either way round, uh, but that's the way that we view it as operating, that this one's happening first and then this one when we're looking at this. Next important concept is that any permutation can be broken down into a composition of two cycles or a composition of transpositions. So let's take this permutation here, which is obviously the free cycle one, two, three. We can break this down into two transpositions as follows. So we can view this as the transposition of one and two here, followed by the transposition of one and three, which we've got here. And if you look at where everything's going to end up when you compose those two transpositions together, one is going to go to two, which will go to two. So one goes to two, two goes to one, which then goes to three. So two goes to three overall, and three goes to three, which then goes to one. So three goes to one. So the composition of these two transpositions overall makes this free cycle. So we can write that one, two, three is equal to, and remember the one at the back, is the one that was done first, so it's equal to the transposition 1, 2, compose them with the transposition 1, 3. Another example now, so if we take a 4 cycle here, so if we look at this 4 cycle, 1 is going to 3, 3 is going to 4, 4 is going to 2, and then 2 is going to 1, so we'd write this as 1, 3, 4, 2, as so. Now, if we wanted to construct this out of transpositions, then we can start by making one go to the correct thing. So if we transpose one and three, that gets uh, one going to three. Um, and then we want to get three going to the correct thing. Now, three needs to go to four. At the moment, three is going to one. So again, we want to do a transposition involving one. So we want this time to transpose one and four, because if we do that, then three is going to be going to the right thing and one is going to be going to the right thing. Then if we look at where 4 has ended up following those two transpositions, 4 now is going up to 1, but 4 shouldn't be going to 1, 4 should be going to 2. So again, we want to do another transposition involving 1, we want to transpose 1 and 2, which will then force 4 to be going to the correct thing. And then the final thing, which was 2, must now be going to the correct thing because everything else is going to the correct thing. Uh, so 2, as you can see, overall ends up going to 1. So if you follow all of those arrows through, you'll see that everything ends up exactly where it would here. So that means that this 4 cycle can be written as the composition of 1, 3, 1, 4, and then 1, 2. Now, this breakdown into transpositions is not unique. So here we have another composition of three transpositions that makes this exact same permutation, but obviously this is very different from this one here. So if we look at this, We've got the permutation of 1 and 2, we've got the permutation of 2 and 4, and then we've got the permutation of 3 and 4. And if you look at where everything ends up on here, 1 goes to 2, which goes to 4, which goes to 3, that's correct. Uh, then we've got 2 goes to 1, which then goes gets fixed, so that's 2 going to 1 overall. If we look at where 3 is going, 3 goes to 3, goes to 3, goes to 4, uh, so that goes down here. And then if we look at where 4 is going, 4 goes to 4, goes to 2, goes to 2. So that's correct as well. So this is another breakdown into transpositions, but you can see that the transpositions we've used here is very different from the ones we've used here. Now you might get excited from this because you might think, well, okay, it's not the case that there is a distinct breakdown into transpositions for each permutation, but look, both of these are made up of free transpositions, so maybe it is the case that for any permutation, the break, any breakdown that you can produce of it into transpositions always has the same number of transpositions in it. Well, unfortunately, that's not quite the case. So here is an example of a composition of transpositions that makes this, that is actually made up of five transpositions. So if you look at this, here is the transposition of 1 and 2, here's the transposition of 2 and 3, here's the transposition of 1 and 4, transposition of 2 and 4, transposition of 1 and 2. And if you follow all of these arrows through, which we'll briefly do, so 1 goes to 2, goes to 3, goes to 3, so that's 1 going to 3, so 1 is correct. 2 goes to 1, goes to 1, goes to 4, goes to 2, goes to 1, so that's correct, 2 is going to 1. 3, if we follow this through, ooh, 3 goes to 4, that's correct, and then 4 has to go to the correct thing, but let's just follow the arrows anyway. So here we go, 4 goes to 2. So this 
composition of transpositions is working. It contains five transpositions and it overall makes this. And if we wanted to write this out, here it is. Composition of one, two, composed with uh, two, three, composed with one, four, composed with two, four, composed with one, two again. So this is five transpositions. It's a breakdown of this four cycle into five transpositions. So it is not the case that any breakdown into transpositions is always going to contain three transpositions. Here's one with five. And you could find ones with seven. You could find ones with nine. You can do this. It's a good challenge for you. What you will not be able to find, however, is a breakdown into transpositions of this four cycle that contains six elements or eight elements or 10 elements. Any breakdown is always going to, of this, trans, of this permutation, is always going to be containing an odd number of transpositions. And if we look at this element up here, this free cycle, one, two, three, it was broken down into this composition of two two cycles, two transpositions. Again, you could find compositions of transpositions containing four or six or eight transpositions that would overall make this free cycle, but you would never be able to find a composition of three transpositions or five transpositions that would make this element. What is the case is that for all permutations, if you break them down into transpositions, any breakdown is always going to contain either an odd number of transpositions or an even number of transpositions. And whether it is odd or even for a certain permutation, we call that the parity of the permutation. So that is what this word up here means. It means whether the permutation is odd or even. So there's only ever two answers. A permutation's parity is either odd or it's even. And what it means is that if you break that permutation down into a composition of transpositions, is the number of transpositions you need either an odd number or an even number? So we'll take a break here and in the next video, what we want to do is actually prove this concept of parity, prove that for any permutation, if you decompose it into a composition of transpositions, the number of transpositions that it will take will always either be odd or even. You can never have a permutation where you can break it down into different compositions of transpositions where one has an even number and one has an odd number. That's not the way it works and we'll prove that uh, in the coming up videos.